It's falling from the clouds A strange and lovely sound I hear it in the thunder and the rain It's ringing in the skies Like cannons in the night The music of the universe plays We're singing You are holy Great and mighty The moon and the stars Declare who you are I'm so unworthy But still you love me Forever my heart Will sing of how great you are and free the song of galaxies reaching far beyond the milky way let's join in with the sound come on let's sing it out as the music of the universe plays we're singing you are holy great and mighty the moon and the stars who you are I'm so unworthy but still you love me forever my heart will sing of how great
Letting go of every single dream I lay each one down at your feet Every moment of my wandering Never changes what you see I try to win this war I confess My hands are weary I need Mighty warrior, king of the fight No matter what I face, you're by my side When you don't move the mountains, I'm needing you to move When you don't part the waters, I wish I could walk through When you don't give the answers as I cry out to you I will trust, I will trust, I will trust in you. Truth is you know what tomorrow brings. There's not a day ahead you have not seen. So in all things be my life and breath. I want you, Lord, and nothing less When you don't move the mountains, I'm needing you to move When you don't part the waters, I wish I could walk through When you don't give the answers as I cry out to you I will trust, I will trust, I will trust in you You are my strength and comfort, you are my steady hand, you are my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand. Your ways are always higher, your plans are always good. There's not a place where I go, you have not already stood. You are my strength and comfort, you are my steady hand, you are my firm foundation. The rock on which I stand Your ways are always higher Your plans are always good There's not a place where I go You have not already stood When you don't move the mountains I'm needing you to move When you don't part the waters I wish I could walk through When you don't give the answers As I cry out to you I will trust, I will trust I will trust in you When you don't move the mountains I'm needing you to move When you don't part the waters I wish I could walk through when you don't give the answers as I cry out to you I will trust, I will trust, I will trust in you
and welcome to our service this morning. I think you probably all want a Lorraine update. Uh, she's at home, she's recovering well. Uh, can you please keep praying for her for the pain to subside and that she'll get complete healing on her shoulder? But I think it's fair to say that it's a good sign that she's now gate crashing all of our Zoom team services. She doesn't seem to be able to keep away from that. And we're really delighted that she's up for that as well. Next week it's half term and she'll be going down to Cornwall with the family. So I really hope that that'll be a time that she'll really get some proper rest and recuperation at that time. Just what she needs. After a break in our sermon service with our outdoor Pentecost service last week, we return to the last of the sermons on I Am. And in fact, this sermon is entitled I Am and Chris Nolan is preaching that for us today. Thank you, Chris. Next week, the sermon ser series shifts a little bit and it's called I've Got a Job for You. And we'll be looking at the variety of gifts that we have and the variety of services that we are called to. If you're on holiday next week, have a wonderful time. And if you're not, have a wonderful time too. Let's hope we have some glorious sunny weather. And Father, we just now pray that this service this morning will touch our hearts and minds and inspire us to walk ever closer with you. Amen. We start our service today recognising our desire for God and our hope for God's mercy. As we think deeply about who we are in this series, help us, Lord, to admit the truth of our lives and step forwards in wholeness and healing. Thank you, God, that you forgive us. Holy God, we open our hearts to you this day and offer the truth of our lives. The fear that stifles us, the prejudice that binds us, the ignorance that hobbles us, the doubt that plagues us. Help us, we pray, that we will find courage in unlikely places, see the world with new and gracious eyes, move to those places where love is needed. Help us to have faith that you know us, have called us and love us, and that you are with us now. Amen.
first reading this morning is from John chapter 16 verses 4 to 15. I did not tell you this from the beginning because I was with you, but now I am going to him who sent me. None of you asks me where are you going, rather you are filled with grief because I have said these things. But very truly I tell you, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, he will send him to you. When he comes, he will prove the world to be in the wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin, because people do not believe in me. About righteousness, because I am going to the Father, where you can no longer see me. And about judgment, because the Prince of this world now stands condemned. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own, he will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. The second reading is from Ephesians 1, verses 3 to 14. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ, in accordance with his pleasure and will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and understanding, he made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ to be put into effect when the times reach their fulfilment, to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. In him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will, in order that we, who were the first to put our hope in Christ, might be for the praise of his glory. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession, to the praise of his glory. This is the word of the Lord. Hi. Good morning, I'm Chris. Thanks, Jill, for those readings. Last week, Penny and I watched the film Les Miserables again and saw new things second time round. 
is about a man named Valjean who'd been brutalized by cruelty and injustice but his life changed when he was unexpectedly forgiven. In his story he sings a song called Who Am I? which is interesting because our culture is dominated by this question in a number of ways. For example, TV shows like Long Lost Family or linking who we are to our appearance drives many TV programs about makeovers, striving for perfect bodies and our homes. We all know this pressure to look perfect is more than we need to live a healthy lifestyle. Celebrities uh, talk about their therapist and how they've learned to love themselves. Related to all this are booming industries in cosmetic surgery, fashion, fitness, therapists and lots of other things. Some experts say there are links from the pressures of our secular culture to the mental health epidemic in our young. Identity can be defined as who we experience ourselves to be, the I each of us carries within. There are so many messages telling us how to define ourselves, but what would it look like to base our identity on how God sees us. One of the richest passages about identity is in chapter uh, Ephesians chapter 1 that we've just had read to us. Here Paul explains identity given to us when we're in Christ. He says we've been chosen, adopted, redeemed, forgiven, lavished with grace and unconditionally loved and accepted. When we're in Christ, these aspects of our identity can never be altered by what we do or how we look. What ends with the word sealed, which means a guarantee of your inheritance forever because your body has become a temple of the Holy Spirit. In another of his letters to the Galatians, he says, you're, you are children of God. There's no Jew or Greek, slave or free, male and female. You're all one in Christ Jesus. Our identity as a child of God transcends every other identity marker out there. Regardless of who we are in God's family, every gender, ethnicity and social status is welcome. If we live out our identity, based on how God sees us, we no longer feel the need to find our worth in external circumstances. We're free of the values of our culture to experience God's love in new ways. And it also allows us to boldly share his love with others. This is the link between our readings today from Ephesians chapter 1 to our Gospel passage, John chapter 16. It begins with Jesus warning the disciples they'll be persecuted when he's gone. He then says he'll send the Holy Spirit to help them and when he comes he'll prove the world to be wrong about sin and belief in him. Jesus is saying first that to witness to a hostile world we must join the Holy Spirit in his witness. The Spirit bears witness through us, and when he comes, he will convict the world through our witness. We first need to understand what Jesus means by the word convict. For me to trust in Christ for my salvation, I must have some sense that I am guilty before God, that I need a saviour. Without that conviction of sin, well, my relationship to Christ will only be superficial at best. If you asked people on the street to give you a list of what they thought were sins, you might hear murder, 
child of his. Stealing, maybe. Lying. I doubt you'd hear not believing in Jesus. Yet, Jesus names it as the sin that the Spirit will convict the world of. The issue is this. They've rejected God's Son, whose death is the only remedy uh, for our sin problem. Look at it this way. If a man went overboard in the middle of the ocean, <coughs> it wouldn't matter much whether he was a good swimmer or couldn't swim at all. It would only be a matter of time until he drowned, because no one is good enough to swim thousands of miles to the shore. But if a rescuer threw him a life belt, the issue is no longer whether he can swim or not. The driving question becomes, will he grab the life belt? If he says, I'm a good swimmer, I don't need a life belt, he'll drown, just like the non-swimmer. Jesus Christ is the life belt that God has provided for the world. You may think you're not worthy to be saved, which, yeah, it's true, because no one is. But the same life preserver is offered to the best and the worst of us. It is the issue. If you don't believe in Jesus Christ, you are not saved. Our role as followers of Christ is to keep throwing life belts. Our role is neatly put in this quote from the American evangelist Warren Wiersbe. There can be no conversion without conviction. There can be no conviction apart from the Spirit of God using the Word of God and the witness of a child of God. So to summarise, over these recent weeks we've explored how the characters in the Bible struggled to know themselves in relation to God. They all followed the God who revealed himself to Moses as I am. The Bible story from beginning to end is the, is the story of God pursuing you and me to rescue us and bring us back from our broken lives joined to his love. We all know the creation story when God made Adam and Eve in his image. This is not about us, it's about God. Less known is the story in Genesis 5 when Adam had a son in his own likeness, in his own image, and he named him Seth. Ever since then, humanity has been in conflict between the image of God and the image of man. In the John 16 passage today, Jesus passes the baton to his followers to carry on God's purpose, to restore humanity to what he intended us to be. That's why he gave us the Holy Spirit as a helper. Without his power, we're helpless in the face of a culture destroying itself, convinced it can, be, it can find meaning and happiness from within its own image. Jesus is the restored image of God in human form. We are all called to follow him, to develop and grow in his image. So let's conclude. What can we say to our culture? lost on the question, who am I? How do we say this is who I am? Well, you've, laid, you've waited long enough, it's time I gave you the answer to this question. Well it goes like this, uh, are you ready? It's the wrong question. At the bottom, this question is self-centred and it doesn't belong to us. Anyway, could we really face the answer? The question belongs to God. When he told Moses, when he told Moses, I am, and it belongs to his son Jesus Christ, who asked his disciples, who do men say that I am? In the Les Miserables story of John, 
For it's the only way we will ever be able to face ourselves with this question, who am I? When he sang the words, my soul belongs to God I know, I made that bargain long ago, he knew his life had been changed. The Le Miserable epic story ends with Valjean, the former thief, a fugitive from the law, filled with hatred. Valjean began his identity when he was surprised by forgiveness that he didn't ask for. That's what changed his life. A life experience that he was adopted, redeemed, forgiven, lavished with grace and unconditionally loved and accepted. Now in his old age, content, at peace with who he had become. Thank you, Chris. Let us reflect on those words for a moment, as it says in Psalm 86. Teach me your ways, O Lord, that I may live according to your truth. Grant me purity of heart, so that I may honour you. With all my heart I will praise you, O Lord my God. I will give glory to your name forever, for your love for me is very great. You have rescued me from the depths of death. Teach us your ways, O Lord, that we may live according to your truth. Adopted, redeemed, forgiven, unconditionally loved and accepted, as Chris so eloquently put. How might God use that in you? If you have a word, a thought, picture or strong gut feeling, I urge you to note that down or share it with a trusted Christian friend. It will help you reflect and remember as you go out into the world ahead. Let us draw this time of reflection to a close on Trinity Sunday by saying this brief creed together. You might like to stand while we say this. We believe in God the Father, who reveals his love to us in Christ. We believe in God the Son, who pours out God's Holy Spirit on us. We believe in the Holy Spirit, who teaches us God's truth. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen.
Good morning. <clears throat> it's time for our prayers. Today is Trinity Sunday, and so we give praise to the Father, praise to the Son, praise to the Spirit, three in one. And we pray this prayer for Trinity Sunday together. Almighty and eternal God, you have revealed yourself as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and live and reign in the perfect unity of love. Hold us firm in this faith, that we may know you in all your ways, and evermore rejoice in your eternal glory, who are three persons, yet one God, now and forever. Amen. God the Father, come to us in your glory and bring justice to your world. As we view the world from space, we see the glory and majesty of our planet. And yet there is so much that is far from your kingdom. We pray that your glory will drive away the injustices we see around us every day. We pray for an end to people trafficking, to release those caught up in any kind of slavery and all kinds of hostage taking. We pray for an end to the oppression and violence that we see in the daily news especially for the people of Myanmar, the people of South Sudan and Sudan, and others that you may recall at this time. Bring the freedom of your kingdom, O God, we pray. And we pray for your cleansing of the pandemic across the world especially in India. We pray for the day when all people have the opportunity of a vaccine to help eradicate this pandemic. And we pray for the work being done to clean up the world of plastic and other harmful commodities that we've allowed into our systems. And we thank you for the G7 talks and the climate change conference, which is planned for later on this year. May the world leaders work together to combat these vast problems. May your kingdom come. God the Son, come to us in your unconditional love and bring compassion to your church. We thank you for the faith that you have given to your people and we pray for that faith to be shown in the world today. Show your faithful people how to reach out with compassion to those in need. We pray for the church to be ever watchful and prayerful to the needs of those around them, those who are hurting, those who are sad and weary, the mental pain of those struggling with life. Those who are bereaved, the lonely, the isolated, and we could go on. So many people, Jesus, who need your healing touch today. May your Christian people step up to the mark and bring your love and compassion to each one they meet, that your church may be seen in the world as a place of healing and hope. And today we pray that that healing, especially upon Lorraine, that her body heals quickly and correctly and that she will soon be back in action. May your kingdom come. God the Spirit, come to us in your power with the wind and the flame of Pentecost. Fill your people afresh each day so they can go above and beyond what is expected of them. Bring your power deep inside the hearts and minds of all Christian people, that they will be changed to be your hands and your feet wherever you have placed them. Show your power in the world through your people. Shake the world with your glory. Heal the world with your compassion. Change the world with the power of your Holy Spirit. Praise to the Father, praise to the Son, praise to the Spirit, three in one. And now we pray together the Lord's Prayer. 
Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, Lord, now and forever. Amen. hope that you enjoyed our service today and that you found it an encouragement. We look forward to you joining us again next week. So as we approach the coming week, let us pray. Father, Son and Holy Spirit, God of loving diversity, help us to forget ourselves and to get caught up in the mystery of your love and life. Grant that we may affirm one another 
more fully, set free those who are oppressed and be drawn more closely together in your loving kindness. Let us never forget the needs of others. Never let us take for granted the mystery of life. Through Jesus Christ, in all and beyond all. Amen. And now, a final blessing on this Trinity Sunday. God, the Holy Trinity, make us strong in faith and love. Defend you on every side and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be with you and those who you love and pray for, now and always. Amen.